Photoshop now has two lens correction tools, the lens correction which was there before in previous versions, and the adaptive wide angle option which is new in Photoshop CS6. Both of them deal with correcting lens distortion within an image and it's especially noticeable when you're dealing with tall objects like buildings and poles that appear to be going off at an angle rather than standing straight upright. So we'll look at lens correction first. It's in the filter menu and all you do is select it and a dialog box comes open. By default, it should automatically detect the lens that was used to create the image if that particular lens is in the profile already loaded into your version of Photoshop. Now there are a lot of profiles already loaded in, but if you can't find your particular images in the preset, you could plug in your camera make and model and choose even the lens model and then select a profile. Now in this case, the camera model it's identifying it as a Nikon D40, but the profile wasn't available, so we're using a Nikon D90 that has a similar range compared to the original camera settings. At the top is the auto correction area. There's also a custom tab, so if you wanted to go a little bit further into making corrections here, you can correct for geometric distortion. So turning that on and off, you can see that turning that on automatically improves the angle of the masts of these boats. You can also turn on chromatic aberrations, which will improve the quality of the image. Vignette, you can increase or decrease a vignette, so you can add it if it's there, or subtract it if you want to subtract it. And so you can make it darker, make it lighter, add it or subtract it. There's also auto scale image, so as you're modifying it with these different options, it will scale to fill the original boundaries of your dialog box, your image. You can also choose edge transparency, edge extension, or black or white. In the custom area, you can increase or decrease the amount of distortion. And this is going to really determine how straight those poles are going to stand from the boats. I'm just going to put it back on zero. You can also adjust red, cyan, green, magenta, blue and yellow fringe. I'm not going to play around with those because I think the color is pretty good. Here's your vignette. You can lighten around the outer edges or darken as I mentioned before. So maybe you really want to put the focus on the boat in the center and not really on the surrounding edges. And then you could also adjust the midpoint. Just get these guys back to zero using my keyboard. And then you can also transform the vertical or horizontal perspective for your image. So if we wanted to adjust that out or in, we could certainly do that. And even adjust the angle of the image. Let's put this guy back to zero. And when you have everything the way you like it, you'll click OK. Now this correction, there's the before, there's the after. This is also a destructive edit. So you'd probably want to make a duplicate copy before you make any changes. Now the adaptive wide angle really works best if you've shot with a wide angle lens or even a fish eye with severe distortion on an image. This image was shot with a sort of a wide angle lens, not completely, but you are seeing a little bit of distortion happening here around the front. So there is a little bit of a fish eye happening in this wide angle scene. To adjust it, Select the layer that you want to modify, go to the filter menu, choose adaptive wide angle, and again it's in a dialog box. Now here is where you can adjust the angle of the distortion and have Photoshop auto correct for you. Before I show you some of these little tools up here, I want to show that you can modify the scale so you can bring it in and out. You can modify the focal length. Decreasing it makes it more fisheye, increasing it tends to straighten it out a little bit, but you can only go so far depending on the original image. And then there's this crop factor, which would determine where your image gets cropped relative to the adjustments that you've made above. There's also fisheye, so if you had a fisheye lens, you would choose that one. There's auto, and then there's full spherical. Now it's looking for a lens, so if it doesn't automatically detect what lens that you're using, it will give you a little alert to help you work your way around the dialog box. 
It's not perfect, but in this case it is detecting the Nikon D40 that was used to shoot this image. Now with this cursor up here, you can create a constraint line by clicking and dragging in a line to try and adjust the curvature. So I could click and notice as I'm dragging, that line is sort of curving along with it. So it's detecting that there was a wide angle or fisheye used, and now it's straightening based on that detection. You could then scale the image up and crop it off so that it looks nice and clean. Or maybe you would leave everything as is and then just do your own cropping. And when you have it the way you like it, just click OK. Again, this is a destructive edit, so you would probably only want to make the change on your duplicate copy of your image and not on the original. So here's another example of before a bunch of people at a concert, and here it is after. We've just adjusted it down so that there's no curvature happening towards the bottom of the screen. Everything is nice and clean.